and uh, in the studio, David Bauman. Oh, I'm sorry, Jared Bauman and uh, Dave Miller. Dave, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good to see you. Same here. And uh, Jared Bauman and Jared's brand uh, products manager, Fiber C Spire. And Dave is the senior manager and media relations for C Spire, part of our family here at Pound 32. Now, it's something called Fiber to Home Initiative. I was talking to some guys at uh, at C Spire about this, and, I, and I'm, I'm excited about it. And t- tell me a little bit about either one of you guys. Just jump in. It's yeah, free so, for all. Uh, we don't charge per word. You can have as many as you want. So, Well, that could be dangerous with Dave sitting next to me here. <laughs> well, that's so. all right. That's that's true. True. Both of you guys have St. Louis connections, so if we fall, if we run out of uh, things to do, we'll talk Cardinals. So go ahead. I don't think we'll run out. So C Spire announced uh, in September that we were bringing our fiber network that we have built mm-hmm. all around the state for our cell phone towers. Uh, we've done that for our 4G deployments and, and to be able to connect up all of our cell phone towers. And uh, what we did is we decided uh, and announced in September of this past year that we are going to now start to take that to the home and allow people to have the ultra-high-speed Internet access mm-hmm. that you might expect from a fiber network right at your home. So where do we go from there, Dave? Is, is fiber in there? Does that what's, what's the next step on here? Is the first Internet connection or... Absolutely. I mean, we 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 as as Jared said, you know, we we made this mm-hmm. announcement in September, and then we we asked uh, any interested cities and counties to apply. We had thirty three cities apply uh, by our October twentieth deadline, and then we actually announced on November fourth nine cities that would be part of the initial. Uh, do you phase. have a list? Do you have a list of those cities? I do. They I are. Sure do they are uh, Batesville, Clinton, Corinth. Uh, let me make sure I've got them all. Hattiesburg, here. Yes. <laughs> Horn Lake, <laughs> Macomb, Quitman, Ridgeland, and Starkville. Now, yeah. when you say those nine, those are the ones where you've already are going to, or are, you already have done it, or you're going to put it. So in? those nine we announced as our finalist, and okay. those cities now are are working to uh, get their citizens excited about it. Mm-hmm. What we decided was we would build where people were most excited, and so. In those cities, tremendous all, investment. There is a huge so you, investment. So you've actually got to go put fiber optics in uh, every one of those homes. We you, do. You've got to do the much like a cable or electric grid and everything else. You've got you've got to physically go put fiber optics to every connection. We do. So literally, fiber optics will come to your house. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just like you have a, a phone line that comes to your house, or maybe a cable company that comes to your house. Yeah. Uh, we'll literally bring fiber optics. Is to your Dave home. the next step on here? Television or, or cable, or is this, are we or are we talking about just internet? Actually, we we are planning to offer multiple services uh, besides the ultra fast one gigabit per second internet access. We're also offering uh, high definition digital television services as well as home phone service mm-hmm. with uh, you know nationwide calling. So. You can you can pick one of those services, or you can pick multiple services. So, we'll so, so it's, it's, it's going to be competitive with other services that, that are now existing. Yes, very much. Um, is it is there a completion date on any of these nine cities you mentioned? We don't have a date set mm-hmm. uh, at any of the cities. What we've done is we've really opened it up. We expect that here in the in the coming month we'll see a number of our areas within the cities actually qualify, or what we call go green. Mm-hmm. Uh, And those areas, we've divided up several neighborhoods in each city. There's multiple areas, and those areas we call fiber hoods uh, because there are sometimes multiple neighborhoods in an area. We're bringing fiber to them. So we call those areas fiber hoods. So fiber hoods are are trying to show us at the individual city level that they are interested in us bringing it. As a fiber hood qualifies, then we will start to build out uh, the fiber actually into that area. So we don't have to wait for the whole city to get there. No. We're really just looking at the individual fiber hood level. As as a consumer, and I know you guys outside, when you take your three-piece suits off, and as a consumer, too, you're hoping that this additional option is going to lead to more competition, and more competition is going to lead to a little bit better price as far as the competition is concerned, certainly in the future. I, w- I would hope that's that's where it's going to go for the consumer. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. No question about it. In fact, <clears throat> if you look at the uh, the way that commercial broadband internet is provided today, mm-hmm. um, it's it's really, and at least in the U.S., it's really, dare I say, an inferior service. 
when you look at the the types of speeds that are available in other countries and then you look at what's currently available in the United States, and particularly with how the Internet has become so critical and such a centerpiece to everything that we do, whether you're talking about, you know, what you do in your own personal time and how, you know, how, how uh, critical it is for that or whether you're in business. I mean, the Internet basically is the engine that runs our economy. Mm-hmm. So to, for the U.S. to be lagging behind other countries – and for us to be in the situation we are right now, I mean, this is why this is so – so this this initiative is so critical to the state of Mississippi. Yeah. We really think this will put Mississippi on the map for, our, for, for good reasons. So many of the old Soviet Union bloc countries, just for example, have higher speed Internet than we do on average than in, in the United States. See, it's, it's another thing for Putin to stick his uh, bare chest out at, and, and that's, not, that's not good. So, <laughs> nipple gate. Yeah, nipple, <laughs> nipple gate again. Well, that's not what we want to see, especially in cold temperatures over in uh, Sochi. Uh, one of the comments on social media here was one of the, their city was not listed where you just mentioned. How can they become a part of this, or is it a possibility if they're – who needs to work to get their city on the list there? So really, it's got to come from the mayor and the alderman, the county supervisors. Where does this start? Yeah, it really does. It really needs to come from the city leaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, it needs to come from those those government leaders in the in the individual areas. And that's how we selected the nine cities that we selected so far. Was there was great excitement that came from the city leaders. Uh, I really applaud you know how quickly some of these city leaders uh, pulled themselves together, mm-hmm. developed great plans. And presented those plans to us as to why they felt they were the best city for C Spire to bring their fiber optic network uh, in. And so really applaud them. They very quickly pulled these things together. 888 808 We haven't mentioned the number, so while the C Spire guys are here, it would be a good idea to mention pound 32 C Spire. So there you go, Perez. Thanks for reminding me. Sue uh, ba, 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 in Quitman. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Good morning. How are y'all? Doing good. Uh, Jared Bauman's here and uh, Dave Miller's here from C Spire. Question? Yes, sir. I would like to know, of the nine cities involved in the competition, what are the rankings? Uh, so as of today, the the ranking, we don't. I, I really don't like to think of it exactly that way. I don't like to think of it as the city. I'll, I'll give the, an answer, but I don't like to think of it as city <laughs> against city. You're, um, so you're making him uncomfortable, but that's good. <laughs> I just want to say, go quit mine. <laughs> go ahead. So, the, really, we like to think of it in the in the mindset of, you know, how can you and your city do the best that you can? And so, if you're in Quitman, then Quitman's a little unique in in our contest mm-hmm. in this, and that Quitman is only one fiber hood. All the others have multiple fiber hoods. Yeah. Quitman is one fiber in itself, and Quitman has done very very well. Uh, right now, they have a, a 23 percent of their goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 23% of people who have signed up or will sign up, is yes. that basically So 23% it? of the households Well, hey, Sue, up. I don't know. Take it from some of the Democrats out there. Go and sign up three times. Just vote three <laughs> times. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. So I didn't know. So you have, thank you, Sue. Appreciate it, man. So you do have rankings out there. We do. Uh, so what we've done is we've uh, asked for people to show their interest. Yeah. And so we actually show that on a tracker on cspire.com forward slash fiber home. Uh, you can go and you can see at the individual fiberhood level within each city. I got it. But David, this is not a this is not an actual commitment, but this is just a pre registration or something. Or actually, it's our way of determining the level of interest. Mm-hmm. So we actually, when you re- pre register, we ask you to pay a nominal ten dollar fee, and then when you fill out the pre registration form, we ask you what services you w- you would be interested in. So we are taking it as a as a strong indication that that consumers want this service, you know, at least one of them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, because that, at the end of the day, that's going to determine where we actually build. Uh, we we have percentage requirements in each of these fiber hoods that Jared was talking about. They range either uh, between thirty five percent or forty five percent. So, once we reach those levels of of interest, then we're going to go back and talk to all the consumers and say, okay, we're ready to build. What services do yeah. you want? One of the questions we have is not available for urban or rural areas. It's not going to be in the country because you have to have the fiber optic, and it's got to be maximized with population somewhere. Yeah, generally it's going to be in neighborhoods. Yeah. yeah. Um, is is my buddy there? Is, is he there? TJ, are you there? No, hang on. Let me go to Butch. Butch, good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, hey. you know, some of us. Hello? Good, go ahead. 
Yeah, somebody was live out in the boondocks, and I was just uh, <laughs> curious if uh, Free Spire is going to have, I know, realize that this is a city-by-city city thing, and you're actually hooking uh, a, a wire or fiber optic to the yeah. house the household. But is there any any way to improve, or you got any plans to improve uh, Internet service in the rural areas? But you, you live so far in the boondocks, I'm not even sure if uh, if satellite reaches you. Well, believe it or not, I can get a ceasefire cell, uh, free, free bar, free G there now. Can you? <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate it very much. You've got to uh, hang up and listen to the But, again, it goes back to the rural area. Yeah, so it, really that comes into our wireless side of the business where yeah. it's the 4G wireless on those rural areas. It's a lot more difficult for us to put individual fiber optic uh, lines into homes that are that are out in the country. But we we would love to get there one day. Yes. Right now we're starting in the cities. Technology is changing so fast, who knows? What comes up next? One more call on this. TJ and Brandon, go ahead, sir. Hey, good morning, fellas. Uh, i got a couple questions real quick. First question is, I know it's going to be probably, what, fiber to the curb, uh, to the side of the house. What about the homes that aren't equipped with Ethernet? Um, are y'all going to actually go in and install, um, make these house, houses, uh, you know, fit with mm-hmm. your fiber yes, network? Yes, we, we will. And so it's actually, it isn't fiber to the curb. It's actually fiber to the house, and we actually will right. bring in fiber optics into your home and it'll connect into a, a gateway there or, or just like you'd think of a wireless router and right. and we'll we'll make it work within the homes as well thank you man appreciate it very much comparable to what's available now as far as multiple outlets and things such as that yeah we can we can do all the things that you would expect yeah. uh from from other services the the big thing here is just the the difference in speed so the average speeds you're going to get in uh in the metro area here mm-hmm. in the jackson metro area or even around the state going to be between 10 and, and 50 meg at the very highest, 50 megabits per second. If you're on a uh, like a cable connection, you might be up to 50 megabits per second. Yeah. On non-cable connection, you, you're going to be considerably lower than that generally. read an article because there was this conversation several months ago that we had about why is the phone so important today. And then somebody brought it to the realization in a tangible way. Said, what would, how big would the room have to be to supplant what you have in your pocket? Library of Congress. Uh, how many books can, as far as Googling up, your phones, if you go back to all of that, movies. I mean, you just you look at what you have in, in the, the source of information, and no wonder it's that important because you have everything right there, your contacts, your phones, your alarm clock, flashlight. And now with telemedicine, <laughs> you've, you've got a doctor in there almost. Yeah, it seems like everything is connected yeah. through the Internet these days. And so it's 1,000 megabits per second is what we're talking about bringing. Not not the 50 or, or 10 that people are used to in their homes. We're talking 1,000 megabits per what second. What does that do? I mean, just give us an idea. How does that make a difference as far as let's, let's go in to, to YouTube or watching a video or something like that? What does it mean? It's is instant. That- it's instant. So if you know if you go to uh, web page today, very common. Uh, you have you have say a family of four. Mm-hmm. You have uh, teenagers in the home. They're wanting to stream uh, something on Netflix or they're you know gaming with their friends. And you know today gaming isn't just playing on a console at your house. You're yeah. actually playing possibly someone across the country or possibly even someone across the world. Uh, all that stuff can be done at the same time. You don't ever have to worry about a conversation saying, it's amazing. Dad, get off the Internet. You're slowing me down. There, I, I can no see it doubling it, but you're talking about going from what to what? Uh, so we're going from about 10 meg is the average mm-hmm. in the United States right today, and we're going to 1,000 megabits per second. Uh, that'll create some calls, Dave. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, one of the things that we're we're really excited about is – what we believe is going to happen when this infrastructure is in and widely available. This this infrastructure is really only available in a handful of cities around the United States. Mm-hmm. So when this gets in and it's in place, it's going to actually transform communities. Both of you guys, thank you, sir. Don't be a stranger. Come back and, and give us a follow-up on this one. Real quick, um, the website... Cspire.com forward slash fiber home. Or if you just go to cspire.com, right at the top, there's a link for And if you're in one of those uh, nine cities, Dave, you need to get on the get on board and, and, and get, Pre- get it done. Pre-register today. You're in yeah. control of your future. By the way, New York Times said yesterday the Galaxy S5 smartphone is going to be unveiled uh, February 24th. Is that true or not? Is that it? Yes, it is going to be unveiled at it's the Global one. World Congress. Uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate it very much. Coming up next, Secretary of State Delbert Hoseman will talk about that card and what it will do and what it won't do. 
It's in the news. Press conference yesterday. You'll hear it live coming up next. What does it take to be Mississippi's news talk leader? Two words. Complete coverage. Complete coverage of breaking news and weather. Be prepared for some very heavy rainfall. A charter school bill has passed in the Senate Education Committee. Complete coverage of news from where you live. And your place to talk about it. Every day. day. Only Super Talk gives you complete coverage. That's why we are the news and talk leader. Super Talk Mississippi. 724 from the Super Talk Traffic Center. Heads up, I-20 eastbound. You're meeting lots of company as you reach the 55-20 split, and it's got you tapping the brakes. Lakeland Drive, you're stacking up through the red lights already, but clearing them nicely, and 220s running free and clear. From News Mississippi Weather Central today, just a slight chance of rain early, then mostly cloudy, high near 38. Tonight brings partly cloudy skies, low down to 25. Your finally Friday, a 20% chance of rain, mostly cloudy, high near 47. Friday evening, chance of rain increases just a little bit, mostly cloudy, low down to 32. And Saturday, a 20% chance of rain, high near 55. More of the Gallows Show up next on Super Talk Mississippi. 